Hi, we're going to talk about limiting reactants with stoichiometry. I'm actually going to do two types of examples, two ways to solve this. I'm going to show you my personal favorite way first, and then a second way that a, a small amount of my students um, seem to connect with, but you'll have both options. So a limiting reactant, what is that? Uh, here's your definition. It's the reactant that determines or limits the amount of product that is formed. You happen, um, you see this in your life actually often. Uh, let's say that you go into the refrigerator and you decide that you want to make an omelet for two. Okay, you're gonna make an omelet for you and for a friend for lunch and you need four eggs and two bell, and uh, let's see, two mushrooms and one bell pepper. So you look in the fridge, great, there's the two mushrooms, there's the bell pepper, but the eggs, you only have three eggs. You don't have four eggs. That means that you couldn't make two omelets. You could only make one and a half omelets. The limiting reactant there is, uh, it's going to be the eggs. They determine how much can be made. Um, same thing is true for chemical reactions. Now there's a danger here. You can't just look at masses. The reason why is individual atoms have different masses. So you have to do stoichiometry. You have to bring these to moles so that we're comparing apples to apples. Um, we're going to do the stoichiometry that you learned in the last video, um, and we're just taking it a step further where we're comparing the two reactants to see which one really is the smallest amount when it comes to moles, and it will produce the smallest, it will form the smallest amount of products. Um, just like the eggs, what's our limiting reactant? Which reactant? So to begin, this is how I do it. <clears throat> I'll have my balanced chemical equation, I write down the amount that I'm given for each reactant. And then I pick one product and we're going to compare both of these to that one product. So you're asking yourself, okay, if I can consume all 750 grams of this ammonia, how much of the nitrogen monoxide will be produced? Second question, well, if I can consume all of the 750 grams of oxygen, how much of that nitrogen monoxide can be produced and then we compare we compare so let's do this first uh, ammonia going to the nitrogen monoxide we begin with what we're given we have 750 grams of ammonia now i'm going to walk the bridge i'm going to go from ammonia to the nitrogen monoxide in order to do that we need to use the molar ratios that bridge four moles of ammonia produces four moles of nitrogen monoxide. Again, keyword molar ratio. So I've got to bring this to moles. We're going to get rid of grams, put grams on the bottom so they cancel. I want moles of ammonia. Uh, in order to do this, we need to do the molar mass. So let's do molar mass together quickly. I'll do that in a different color. We have one nitrogen and that is 14.01. And then we've got three hydrogens, 1.01, .01, add that up, we get 17.04 grams per mole. So there's the molar mass. I'm going to put one mole of ammonia weighs 17.04 grams. Okay, we cancel the grams of ammonia. Now we can go from moles of ammonia to moles of nitrogen monoxide. Walk that bridge from one compound to another one. So moles of ammonia go on the bottom, so they cancel. And I want moles of nitrogen monoxide. Those go on top. This is where we look at the molar coefficients. Four moles of ammonia are going to produce four moles of nitrogen monoxide. Okay, you could stop here if you want. I often go one more step because um, more often than not, the question wants, how many grams are produced. So I go ahead and just bring it to grams right now so that I'll have the answer at the very end. Notice moles of ammonia cancel. I have moles of nitrogen monoxide. Now I have to bring that to grams, so we use molar mass. Moles of nitrogen monoxide on the bottom, grams on the top. Let's do molar mass on this one. Uh, we have one nitrogen is 14.01. We've got one oxygen is 16, add that together and we get 30.01 grams per mole. So now we can put our numbers. We've got one mole of the nitrogen monoxide is 
weighs 30.01 grams. Okay, now we can put this all in our calculator. 750 divided by 17.04 times 4 divided by 4 times the 30.01. And our answer is 1,000. Let's say I'm going to do it to three significant figures. 1,320 grams of nitrogen monoxide. So think about what we just found. If we step away from all of these numbers, what did we just find? If we consume all 750 grams of ammonia, it will produce 1,320 grams of that nitrogen monoxide. So now we're going to go to that second question. Well, what if we consume all 750 grams of the oxygen? How much nitrogen monoxide will be produced? Um, and only one of these will end up being the, the correct one. We're looking for that limiting reactant. We're looking for the one that's like the eggs, the one that limits how much will be made. Okay, I have 750 grams of oxygen. We want to get rid of our grams of oxygen and with moles of oxygen. Oxygen's molar mass is 16. I've got two oxygens, two times 16. You've got 32 grams for every one mole of oxygen. Now we're going to do that molar ratio, walk the bridge. Go from oxygen to the nitrogen monoxide. So I want to get rid of the moles of oxygen and I want to end with moles of nitrogen monoxide. And then I put my numbers in. Five moles of oxygen produce four moles of nitrogen monoxide. Let's pause here for just a second. Notice the grams of oxygen cancels moles of oxygen, and right now, if I stopped right here, I'd be left with moles of NO. Okay, let's go one more step, we're gonna bring it to grams. So I wanna get rid of the moles of NO, moles of nitrogen monoxide, and end with grams of nitrogen monoxide. I can go ahead and plug my numbers. One mole is, we already found the molar mass, 30.01. Notice moles of nitrogen monoxide cancel, and we're going to be left with grams of nitrogen monoxide. So let's see what that amount is. Take 750 divided by 32 times 5 divided, excuse me, times 4 divided by 5 times 30.01 and oh, check it out. 36, 66, 563 grams. So we came up with two numbers for nitrogen monoxide. At this point, you're thinking, okay, which one's the answer? it will always be the smallest amount. You can't make any more than the smallest amount. Just like I could only make one and a half omelets. I don't have enough eggs to make two. Well, we don't have enough oxygen to make more than 563 grams. So your takeaway on this is you always choose the smallest amount. Um, and that smallest amount will come from the limiting reactant. So I literally will write LR above the, um, above the reactant that limits how much will be formed uh, because this will determine how much water is formed as well. It will also determine how much of the ammonia is consumed because when that O2 is gone, the reaction stops. By default, that means that we're going to have some leftover ammonia that's going to be excess. There's no way we're going to use all of that up. Um, so the smallest amount, smallest amount is always going to be um, from the limiting reactant. Whatever produces the smallest amount, there you have it. That came from your limiting reactant. Now, the second way to do this, um, I would say one out of every five, about 20% of my students like this. What you do is you compare the two reactants to one another. We're going to compare the ammonia to the O2. The reason why I don't use this one is because you have to think. And very honestly, I try to think as little as possible. This one to me, if I might make a mistake, uh, I'd be more prone to make a mistake on this one. But like I said, some students love it. So I'm going to show you a second way to figure this out. Okay. Begin with one reactant, and we're going to walk the bridge to the second reactant to say, well, if I use all of this ammonia, 
how much O2 do I need? And then by looking at it and thinking about it, you can figure out which one's the limiting reactant. Here we go. We have got 750 grams of ammonia. And by the way, it doesn't matter which reactant you start with. I'm just sometimes slightly OCD. I will start on the most left reactant. Okay, we're going to bring this from grams to moles so that we can walk the molar bridge. We've got 17.04 grams of ammonia and one mole of ammonia. So grams of ammonia cancel. Now we're going to walk that bridge. We're going to go from the four moles of ammonia to the five moles of oxygen. Now I'm going to bring this to grams because I've got to compare it to the grams I'm given, the 750 grams. One mole of oxygen weighs 32 grams of oxygen. So when we do this math, oh, really interesting, we get 1,760 grams of oxygen. Okay, this is where you have to think. If we use all 750 grams of ammonia, it's going to require 1,760 grams of oxygen. So then you look at what you're given. Oh, we were only given 750 grams. I'm going to run out of oxygen way before I hit 1,760. So that means oxygen must be the limiting reactant. So if this connects with your brain, you actually save yourself a whole stoichiometry reaction. For me, it's just not worth it because I'll make a mistake. But if this works, it's actually the more efficient way to do it. You just have to be really careful that you are thinking, all right, if I use all of this, I'm required to have this much, uh, uh, the second reactant, do I have enough? Is this going to be an excess? Will that be a limiting reactant? You just have to think your way through it and you'll be fine. Okay, good work, thank you.